Today we're going to be looking at creating, uh, you know, nice looking buttons either for a web page or an application. I've already opened up Agave, which I've shown you how to use in tutorials before, and it gave me a color scheme here that I am going to, uh, I'm probably going to use this color scheme right here. Next I'm going to start up GIMP, and uh, when we have GIMP open, I'm going to create a new uh, project, and I'm going to call, uh, not call it, but give it a... Uh, Resolution of probably 500 by, we'll go 250 here. And I'm giving it a white background. Scale that, oops. Selected a different color there, but scale that out a little bit. I'll also move this over here so I can see my layers. And let's go back, I'm gonna try to find kind of a dark purple scheme. Oh, it's not saturation. Uh, there we go, something like that. So we have this, I'm going to create a new layer here of the same size. I am now, I can press Control A and it will select the entire uh, uh, image here uh, if it isn't already selected. Then I can go select and I'm going to do uh, round rectang rounded rectangle. And I'm going to leave it at 50 for this. And when I press OK, you'll see it took my square selection, my rectangular selection, and uh, rounded the edges for me. Now make sure we have our new layer selected. I am going to choose my paintbrush, and I'm gonna choose my color here. I'm gonna use the eyedropper. I'm just gonna grab the color from Agave here. But you can also look at the coordinates here and you can see and add them in up here, but it's simple enough just to use the eyedropper there. I'm gonna fill that in. Next, I am going to go select. I'm going to shrink my selection, and I'm gonna shrink it probably two pixels here. So now you can see that my, my border has been shrunk down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now select this lighter color from Agave. And I'm going to use my uh, uh, granulating tool here. And, uh, and I'm going to select uh, foreground to transparent. And then I'm just going to drag from here up. I'm going to hit the control button, which will give me a nice 90 degree angle there. And I'm gonna go all the way like that. No, I think I'm gonna go more of a, probably a little more than halfway, like so. So we're starting to create a button here. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a new layer. Okay. And I'm gonna create a rectangle on this layer. Uh, I'm just gonna come in a little bit from the corner here. I'm gonna go all the way out over to this side, try and make it even distance from the edge. And I'm going to go select and I'm once again round the rectangle and I'm going to put it at about uh, 95 or 90, 95. So there we go, we got a little bit of a, a selection there. So now I'm actually going to switch this around and I'm going to use this tool again and I'm going to once again go from foreground to background or foreground to transparent and I'm going to once again hold down control so it locks me in at about 90 degrees or at 90 degrees and go like so. Okay, now that I have that done, we can look at what we have as a button so far. Our button's coming along nicely. I'm gonna create another new layer. I'm gonna move that all the way up to the top here. Ah, let's see. And now I'm going to, in that new layer, right about where this uh, layer ends, I'm going to, and in fact, I'm gonna show you if you can use your your ruler tool, just grab over here and go like so. And I can do again over here so that this rectangle I'm about to create will be the same width as our little reflective uh, area up here. Once again, I'm gonna choose the rectangle tool and right about here, I'm just going to draw a line or a box that looks like a line. And now I'm going to grab my fill bucket, still have white selected, and I'm going to fill in that rectangle. I'm going to press Control A to select all, and I'm going to go up to filters, blur, and and gaseous blur. I um, don't know how you say that third one down right there, and we're going to blur it out pretty big. I'm going to go a little higher, close to 30. 29 sounds good, right there. So now, so far, if we look at this, you can see that we have. Uh, a nice looking button. I'm going to take it a step further 
I'm going to select this background, uh, not background, but the first new layer I created. I'm going to use the select by color tool. I'm going to select this so it selects all the white area and then I'm going to invert that. So now we have basically our background, the background of our button selected. And I'm going to shrink that down one. And the reason I'm shrinking this down is because I'm about to add a drop shadow. And if I don't shrink that down, when I add the drop shadow, it might add a little bit of a border around the image, and I don't want that. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, now that I have that selected, I'm going to go Filters, Light and Shadows. I'm going to drop a shadow. And the offsets, I'm going to hit 0 and 0. And I think I'm going to leave the blur at 15 there. And the rest looks good. We're going to allow resizing. OK. And I'm going to select our background layer again here. I'm going to go layers. And I'm going to go uh, to size of image. So oh, let's control Z to undo that. And switch this around so our background color is white. And I am going to select layer to size of image. And now you can see what our button's starting to look like here. And uh, now you can just add uh, text in there if you'd like. But let me see, I'm going to save this out. And I'll save it as uh, button1.png. Now, if you're going to want to edit it later on, you want to save it under uh, the GIMP format. But I'm just doing a PNG here. Uh, and save, save, file not file new, file open. And I'll just open up that button I just created. You can see it a little bit clearer here without all the boxes and lines on it. So there we go. We have a pretty cool looking little uh, button there. You can also, if later on you want to use this under a different theme, you can go to um, hue and saturation and you can adjust the hues. Give yourself a, a kind of a red button here or a green button over here. And so that's an easy way once you create the button to easily change the color scheme of it. So that is how you make a cool looking button for your websites or applications. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and visit Films by Chris for more video tutorials like this.